While there are a good variety of bows in Dark Souls 1, they're more meant to be used in more tactical ways rather than a source of raw damage. By now you are aware that you can beat the game with only bows and crossbows, but I hadn't seen anyone try to beat the game with the bigger brother of the ranged class, the Great Bow. However, that just didn't seem good enough for me, and while setting up for this challenge, I wondered if it were possible to beat the game in a more limited number of arrows. That poses the question of, can you beat Dark Souls 1 with only 999 arrows? The rules for this are simple. First, I am restricting myself to only using the Great Bow because I want to get as much damage as I can per shot. It is also extremely slow and can be dangerous to use around aggressive bosses. Its stamina usage is also massive, meaning I usually can only get in one dodge before getting hit. All of these combined make for a good challenge, I suppose. The second and more interesting restriction is that I can only have one stack of 999 great arrows for the entire game. That's right, we have limited ammo and we have to make them count. Another restriction is that this is a straight up one shot run. At no point will I use save states or replenish my arrows if I have a bad fight. If I miss, that arrow is gone for good. So I need to make every shot count. I'll go over the last restrictions quickly. This is an all bosses run, no summoning, no major skips, and I will only level myself up when necessary. Everything else goes. Let's get started. Starting out, I pick the thief for the master key and black fire bombs for my starting gift. I use an exploit that allows me to kill the asylum demon and get the key to leave without actually killing him, because otherwise I can't begin this challenge properly. Don't worry, we'll be back later. Okay, so now that we're out of here, we have to actually acquire the great bow. The problem is that it is located in Anor Londo, and we have nothing to kill enemies or bosses with. Now, I could have asked someone online to drop me one, or play on PC and just mod one into the game for me, but I decided to go with the much harder way. Also, this is all demo footage I took after the fact because I didn't film the setup. First, we need to glitch into Sin's Fortress using this hollow. The gist of this glitch is that by reposting him in this specific position, we clip into the death camp plane, you know, the cinematic view you get when falling to your demise. This just so happens to deload a lot of assets, one of which being the gate to Sin's Fortress. We quit out and make our way up Sin's Fortress to the Iron Golem. Next comes the Iron Golem skip. Now you might be wondering when I got the Black Knight Greatsword and why. Don't worry, I introduced him to Gravity to get it, and for this upcoming skip, you need a Greatsword or some sword that has this specific running attack. The Iron Golem is a bit glitchy with his grab. If you hit him at the right time, the grab stops, but sometimes, if you time it just right, you get launched past the wall into the area where Aaron Londo is. If everything, and I mean everything, lines up, you will land here. After that, you need to use the dark sign, and while the game is loading, you need to stop the application itself. If you time it right, the game will be confused and put you in Anor Londo proper. This is easier said than done because if anything is off about this glitch, you will get yeeted into the stratosphere and have to try again. Needless to say, this one took me a couple of hours. Either way, we carefully tread our way through the abandoned city, pick up the bow, fully upgrade it, and buy 999 arrows. I also got Havel's armor for good tanking. With all that done, we can warp back to the Undead Parish and we can officially start the run. Just for everyone's knowledge, I decided to fight the bosses in the order you'd see in a first playthrough, and just for the sake of time, I won't be going into detail about every area since it's mostly running past, so unless something interesting happens, just assume it went well enough. The Taurus Demon is up first, and we can truly see what kind of damage this thing does. A lot. Of course, this is beginning area boss with a fully upgraded Great Bow, but still, this thing melts early game bosses, so no surprises there. Heading to the Gargoyles, I was confident, and I had every right to be. The bow's damage is awesome, and they don't get time to make a 2v1 hell for me. Hopefully something similar doesn't pop up in the future and make my life hell. Moving on, I make my way to the Darkroot Garden and face the Moonlight Butterfly. Makes sense that this boss goes down quickly because I don't have to wait for it to land. That being said, I wasted my first arrow of the run because this arrow hit the railing instead, but I'm not sweating the arrow count. Next, we move to the Lower Undead Burg, and after introducing all the friendlies in the area to fire, I take on the Capra Demon. Havel's armor helps a lot, and to save as many arrows as possible, I ignore the dogs. A little stressful, but nothing some tanking and chugging can't handle. Going into the depths, I ignore the channeler to save some ammo and go right for the gaping dragon. I only go for headshots, and it doesn't take too long since this is the easiest boss, even with the channeler shooting at me. Alright, so Blight Town exists. Similar to the last challenge, it can be hectic running through areas with no way to defend yourself, but once you get out of the initial area, the density goes down and I make my way to Quaylog. 
the first boss in the game that headshots, or torso shots in this case, are applicable for, as in she takes extra damage and is staggered. Don't get it twisted. With the slow speed of the Great Bow, I have no time to stunlock her, but with some patience, the arrows prove too much. Also, it might be a good time to mention that as far as I'm aware, none of the wikis mention which bosses have headshot bonuses outside of the Gaping Dragon, so I will be cataloging which bosses have one from now on for your own knowledge, so you're welcome. Anyways, after climbing out of Blight Town, oh no, I forgot to push Lawtrek off the cliff. I could invade Lawtrek and get her soul back, but I don't want to waste arrows, so I'm stuck without Firelink for the rest of the playthrough. Sucks, but it's par for the course with me. So we enter Sins legitimately, and yeah, it's the Iron Golem. He doesn't have a headshot bonus, but it wasn't until he was almost dead that I decided to shoot his legs, and to no one's surprise, you can stagger him. What is with me in forgetting pivotal information? So arrows could definitely be saved in this fight, and for the giant bomb chucker, just hit his balls and he won't mess with you. This goes for all men, by the way. Finally, we made it back to Anor Orlando, and since I have all the shortcut unlocked, it's an easy jaunt back to the bonfire. Now we all have to deal with Biggie and Smalls. Yep, this was extremely rough. I honestly didn't think it would be this bad. Now, my initial strategy was killing Orenstein as I usually do, but that just proved too tough. He is just too fast and can dodge your attacks, and you only have a small window of time where you can get a shot on him without smoke dunking on you. Pair that with the fact the bow leaves me with no stamina and I died a couple of times and wasted a good amount of arrows. Turns out that killing Smo first was better as the total HP of the fight was lower if I did it this way. This was definitely the way to go and once I got to phase 2 I used the pillars to my advantage and exploited Orenstein trying to throw lightning at me repeatedly. Another benefit of this order was that I could get the Leo Ring, but I actually forgot to pick it up. Like seriously, what is wrong with me? Again, the wiki is no help, and I can't find any information about whether bows actually benefit from this ring or not, so let's just pretend it wouldn't have helped. After that pain train, I ended up taking my frustrations out on the rest of the Gwyn family tree. Like the last video, this was easy, and still satisfying. Also, I have the red tear stone ring. Don't know where else to put this, and this was the only fight I used it in as I was too scared to use it elsewhere due to the bow's speed, and I didn't want to waste arrows by dying. I decided to then head off back to the asylum and take care of everything I had left undone. The asylum demon was easy and his brother didn't fare much better, just longer. Grabbed the doll and figured it was time for the painted world. This world would be much quicker trip than last time. Just had to make my way through to the bridge with the dragon, hop to this absolutely intended piece of geometry, and skip my way to the boss, avoiding all those peaceful inhabitants. Priscilla was easy since she won't run at you and you can take your time. In fact, one arrow staggers her out of her invisibility. Not so fun fact, this boss has no headshot bonus. She just takes these large rods to the face like a champ. Are we really doing this again? Anyways, I finally go for the only valuable asset of this boss and she dies immediately. Nice. Next, I figured I'd go and take care of the demon ruins first, which means that Ceaseless is up. Now, he officially may not have a headshot bonus, but it looks to me like it'll do just fine. Moving on, we fight Red Stray Demon and it's just the same boring fight. Whatever. However, the fight after it was interesting, and for the sake of the challenge and conserving arrows, I decided to kill this boss without any arrows at all. In fact, I introduced him to gravity. All you need to do is sit against this corner and block all of his attacks. Eventually, he'll be right on you and then grab you. Escape the grab and you'll notice he's gone. Wait 30 seconds and the boss will die and you will be able to continue on. Now there is an exploit with Super Orenstein to do the same thing, but I wasn't going to risk spent time and arrows to do all that just to potentially die. Unlike this fight, which has no guaranteed arrow usage. Either way, we make our way to the bed of chaos, and this time it went a lot better. I maybe used more arrows than necessary for the second orb, but it was well worth it. One down, three to go. The Duke's archive seemed like the best move at this point, so after making my way up the elevators, I decided to take the shortcut and avoid prison this time. No idea if you can even break out of it with just a bow, but we'll never know. It's all the same anyways, run through the area, dodge enemies, and fight one of the slowest bosses in the game with a ranged weapon. Seath has no headshot bonus, even though I think he should. Either way, just the expected outcome, nothing less. Now bear with me here on the odd order of which things happen next. First, I figured it'd be good to access the DLC, so I took out the Hydra with ease, as each arrow takes a head off. Hello everyone, um, future me here just saying that I actually forgot to write this part into the script. Really goes to show how memorable this fight was. 
Anyways, to make up for it, please enjoy this next short clip accompanied by jazz music from the hit video game, Mr. Mosquito. Enjoy. After arriving, I decided to give the Sanctuary Guardian a go, and it was more than doable. This boss likes to dodge after doing anything, so I can get good counter damage and have good windows to wind up my attack. No issues here. Note. This is where I decided to level up Vitality, Endurance, Strength, and Dex to 40. It never went further than that. This was the end of the first stream, and in the second stream, I wanted to go back and finish off the Catacombs route. First, Pinwheel. Of course the damage is great, however I didn't want to waste arrows killing his clone so I had to risk getting ganked pretty hard, and towards the end of the fight I actually lost track of the real one. Never a doubt though. Now for a fight I knew would be a problem if I didn't prepare. Off camera, I acquired the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring from Sen's Fortress and the Fog Ring from trading a Skull Lantern with Snuggly. Usually, the smaller skeletons will harass you constantly no matter what, and with a great bow we have to ignore them, but with the combination of these two rings, we're invisible to them meaning we have full attention for the Skeleton Man himself. If you use this strategy, there's a chance Needle will get stuck on them, and when paired with our range capabilities, means we can just shoot him from far till the end. We still have to worry about the screaming spike attack, and I swear some of these arrows went right through him without damaging, but whatever. Easy enough. It was after this we went back to the DLC, and the next boss up was Artorius. Despite being my favorite boss, this fight took the longest because he doesn't have many punishable attacks. The most consistent strategy I found was to bait out his leaping attack, but sometimes if I wasn't quick enough he would dodge. Fun fact, this boss does have a headshot bonus and staggers. Once he gets to phase 2 where he powers up, as long as you land a headshot it'll immediately end his buffing animation. This made the fight much more manageable, but sometimes he would have his body turned where I had no time to get a headshot. So if he had to power up, I waited for it to dissipate as to not get wrecked immediately. Got him first try. Not bad. Heading off to the Chasm, we grab the pendant and roll down this elevator in a cool way to face off against Manus. If you watched the last video, you know this was already possible. Again, getting headshots is best here and I found that in phase 2 the magic ring attack was the best opportunity for a headshot as he roars guaranteed, allowing you to get free damage. Very exhilarating stuff. For the last boss here, Calamite, I wanted to have something interesting going on here. Before the arrow restriction, I wanted to kill him without Goss' help, but it would be a huge strain on supplies in the current format. Speaking of, you may be wondering why I didn't use Goss' bow or his arrows after this. I actually didn't forget, I just figured it'd be more interesting to use one thing for the whole run. In my own head cannon for this playthrough, I imagine that since Goff and the giant blacksmith are friends, the arrows I got from him are a gift from Goff that are the only ones remaining, which is why I have a limited supply. Either way, I equip some tanky armor, and with a slow roll, we can actually get out of the way of most of his attacks. However, in my first attempt, I overestimated the armor and got burnt to a crisp. The next attempt, I played more cautious and had more success. Your best bet is punishing his fire attacks, or creating distance and getting one shot off then dodging. Fun fact, this boss has a headshot bonus. It's the red eye. You may have known that, but did you know that hitting it is extremely hard? The area you need to hit is not generous whatsoever, but if you do manage to hit it, it's worth triple damage. I managed to do it twice towards the end of the fight and got a unique death animation for it, so enjoy. With all that done, we make our way to the final challenge of the game, the Four Kings. Why is it when a challenge revs up in difficulty, it's always you 4 5 I decided to decimate Ingward for the key, and after draining, I took the plunge. My setup here was full Havels and go full tank. And I mean that. I dodged nothing, and did the classic COD technique known as barrel stuffing. Except this time there isn't some idiot yelling derogatory slurs at you for using an arbitrary technique in a video game. What I did have was a nightmare of a fight that always manages to give me anxiety. I just keep blasting and hope that the other kings don't get too aggressive. I think there were five kings in this fight at one point. It also didn't help that they loved the grab attack this time around. But maybe that was for the better as it helped keep me invulnerable from the others. Chugging Estus in humanity, I won the fight. Time for the victory lap. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. My main strategy here was full tanking. Getting a parry off of Gwen and retaliating with a shot from behind, I managed to stagger every third shot, but otherwise I had to tank some hits here or there. Took a minute, but was doable with the occasional heal. 
Either way, that marks the end of the challenge, and we find out that you can, in fact, beat Dark Souls with a limited number of arrows. In fact, it took me about 438 arrows for every single boss in the game. Yeah, this challenge was more than doable, but clearly that number could be a lot lower with better aim and less dying. I personally challenge everyone to try and get that number lower, or attempt this in one of the other games. Also, please subscribe if you like the content I've been putting out. I'd love to do more. Anyways, I'm Mr. Metagross. Have a nice day.